a thought-provoking new documentary follows an evangelical minister searching for the courage to preach about America's growing toll of gun violence. The film tracks Reverend Rob Schenck, an anti-abortion activist and fixture on the political right who breaks with orthodoxy by questioning whether being pro-gun is consistent with being pro-life. Abigail Disney is the executive producer and director of the film, which is entitled Armor of Light. Reverend Rob Schenck is an evangelical minister and founder of the Christian organization Faith in Action. He's also president of the National Clergy Council and chairman of the Evangelical Church Alliance. They join me from Philadelphia. Their new documentary is called The Armor of Light. Well, uh, explain that title, Abigail. Uh, it's from Romans 13, 12. The night is far gone, the day is nearly here, so let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. It's, the film is really about a lot about fear and how we react to fear. And it deals with uh, Reverend Schenck and, and, and deals with the mother of a teenage shooting victim. Explain a little first, Abigail, and then we'll talk to the Reverend. Give me the concept of the film. Right, right, right. Well, Lucy McBath is the mother of Jordan Davis, who was shot in a um, gas station in Florida, uh, mostly because his music was too loud and, and the man next to him objected to that. He emptied a Glock into a retreating vehicle and then pleaded, stand your ground. Um, it's a horrific case, really horrific. Um, Rob here next to me, um, is a pro-life evangelical minister with great standing in, in the um, right-wing community, it's fair to say, yeah. And, um, and uh, he's sort of rethinking his, um, his position, his community's position on guns and gun control. So the film is really about his evolution and uh, him and Lucy trying to think through uh, humane and, and religious, spiritually um, um, honest way of approaching the gun issue. Now, is, the, is it the film that brought your attention to this or something else, Reverend? Uh, well, a few things. Uh, of course, the invitation from Abby to participate in this project was very important. But it was a growing concern that I had. Uh, I'd never really taken the gun question that seriously, although the arming up, if you will, of my evangelical community was was a quiet concern to me, but I really hadn't addressed it until Abby invited me to kind of verbalize, at least give voice to those concerns. And then came, uh, there had been a series of events uh, that took me close to some terrible shooting incidents. One of them I discussed with you, Larry, uh, on air uh, many years ago, or a few years ago now, uh, was the shooting of uh, five Amish girls in their schoolhouse in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. But uh, there were some other incidents, and then after I told Abby, yes, I would at least begin to explore the subject with her, uh, there was a shooting at the Washington Navy Yard uh, near my home in Washington, D.C., and that kind of propelled me. And then finally, in meeting Lucy, uh, who's featured in the film, uh, and hearing her story of tremendous loss and uh, the ugliness of that incident, and then the attempt to defend it on some kind of moral grounds really disturbed me and, and uh, cinched the deal. And uh, from that point on, uh, I've explored it and, and taken it on as an ethical crisis in my community. Makes sense. Let's watch a clip from The Armor of Light. I'm concerned about the NRA promoting the idea that the best way to solve the most vexing problems in our society is to be prepared to shoot people dead. That doesn't sit well with me as a Christian moral vision. And when we champion the Second Amendment over and above the Word of God, then we must be very careful that in respecting the Second Amendment, we don't violate the Second Commandment. Abigail, do you think that terrorist shootings in, in Paris are going to increase people's demand to have guns or lessen them? 
Oh, I, I'm sure we're going to see an increase in demands, and that stems from the somewhat irrational idea that in order to prevent a statistically improbable event by carrying a gun with you all of your life and being prepared to shoot at all times, you should take on this statistically more likely scenario of carrying a gun with you all the time and being 43 times more likely to shoot someone you love or yourself with it. So unfortunately, our risk reward analysis is a little bit off, uh, partly because the facts have been skewed. Um, but we're likely to see a lot of fear. And fear is really the primary motivator um, for the demand for guns in this country. Reverend Schenck, what do your fellow evangelical ministers think of this? Because it feels like it's hypocritical. Well, of course, I'm trying to bring that into the conversation because the evangelical community is overwhelmingly pro-life. That means that we defend the sanctity of human life, every human life, every person from conception until natural death. And it seems to me that the idea of carrying a lethal weapon for the purpose of shooting to kill, and you must be. I, 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 underwent my own firearms training for this film because I, I want uh, hands-on experience with it. And, and one of my instructors said, whenever you carry a handgun for self-defense, you must be prepared to use it to kill in an instant. Because if you're not willing to kill, then you're actually uh, of, you're, you're a greater danger carrying the weapon because it's likely going to be taken from you and used to either shoot you or shoot somebody else or probably both. So you have to be ready to kill. That means you have to identify the people that you are prepared to kill, and even to imagine them in your mind and the, and the circumstances that would cause you to do that. To me, that, that brings an ethical uh, crisis to the pro-life evangelical Christian. We have to now start determining whose life we will take. And that seems in contradiction to the principles that we espouse. Like, Abigail, shouldn't you be fearful more of your child being shot than the government taking your gun away? Yeah, well, that, that's my calculation, but I don't think we can really dismiss the level of fear that we're encountering among people, especially evangelicals, about the government. I don't think it's a justified fear, but, but fear is real when you feel it, whether it's justified or not. So, and we should listen to this fear because what, what are people, what is happening in a country where people are genuinely afraid that their own government is going, coming to get them, coming to destroy them, coming to do something? I mean, I, I think we have a lot of work to do on the political discourse in this country. And, and the gun issue kind of mirrors the, the larger political dynamic. What, what we try to do in this film is, is to kind of take the fringes out of the conversation. So. The rest of us, the vast majority of us, who are somewhere in the middle and want to have a reasonable conversation, can have that conversation. So the, the fringes intimidate everybody out of the conversation, and, and, and we need to get back to hearing from our own uh, regular common sense. So, so that needs to happen both around the gun issue, but at a broader level um, in our polarized political culture. And in the film, it brings home when you bring it right to the human level, right, Reverend? Very much so. Uh, first of all, of course, uh, every act of gun violence involves real people who experience real loss and real trauma. And as a pastor, I'm very concerned about those real people and the experiences that they have and the loss that they sustain. And as a pastor, I, I care very much about their souls. Uh, but I also care about the people Abby is describing who are possessed by fear. And that also is a pastoral concern. So for me, uh, I'm challenging pastors, church leaders, others uh, in the evangelical community, but by extension, others in, in other religious communities to address this uh, with real people, the people in their pews, in their congregations uh, that worship with them and make it a, a, a critical issue that we have to resolve. We can't just simply shrug it off and say, well, more people are gonna die, so what? That's never been our attitude in the Christian community. We have a long history in the Christian community of addressing social issues that impact people's lives, especially when that brings suffering. And, and this has brought suffering. And 
So it's a, an appeal to common sense and beyond that, an appeal to conscience. The people who are fearful, what do they say to you, Abby? In other words, what is the basis of the fear? It, the, it, it, it runs the gamut, but the two most common fears that you hear are that the government is coming to get them and they need their guns to defend themselves. Um, it's, it's a hard one for me to understand. Based on what? But it is a very, based on, I think, a long history. Rob can probably answer this better than I can, but I think that it's been a long history of evangelicals feeling marginalized by culture, the mainstream culture, and we do marginalize them, especially in our popular culture. And the other thing is a fear of crime. Yes, crime numbers have never been lower, um, but people have been never more convinced that somebody's getting ready to break into their house and shoot them. I have often asked, Bob, I wonder if you know, how many people last night in America had their homes invaded by someone with a gun that they had to shoot? Well, I'm not uh, the expert on statistics. Abby I would is. bet she could probably none. tell you, but <laughs> probably, at least in my world, as I ask that question, and I do ask it, Larry, I, I ask it of the folks I engage in conversation, even to whole audiences, and I haven't yet discovered one. I know it happens. Of course it happens. But the fear is grotesquely exaggerated. And again, I, I see that as a faith crisis, and that's why I'm trying to address it in a spiritual sense. And I think it's the best way in my community. And it's why I hope pastors will see this film, watch The Armor of Light, maybe screen it in their churches, at least for their leadership, and beyond that, take it on in the pulpit, preaching, teaching, using their pastoral tools of counseling and what we call discipleship formation, that is, helping Christians to form themselves uh, in their thinking, in their attitudes. Those are really important things. And my great hero, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, uh, a German Lutheran pastor who was murdered by the Nazis uh, for his courage in speaking out against the horrors of Adolf Hitler. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer said, we need to read the Bible against ourselves. In, in other words, to challenge our thinking. And on this one, I think the Bible has a lot to say about fear. It has a lot to say about the other, the other people in our world, the stranger. And in fact, calls us not just to care for the stranger and to accept the stranger into our midst, the alien, if you will, in fact, that word is used in some Bible translations, but also to love even our enemies. And what is the implication of that when we decide that the way to relate to other people is to take on uh, lethal firepower? It, it, it just seems completely in conflict with our Christian sensibilities, and I hope pastors will help us make that case. I think everyone should see this film. I can't wait to see it. Thank you both very much. Thanks, Larry. Thank you.